All right, welcome back to Everyday Race. Today we're going to talk about the wheel rate. We already talked about the spring rate. We talked about the motion rate, uh, motion ratio. So today we're, we're going to, since we have the spring rate and we have the motion ratio, we'll be able to f uh, figure out what the wheel rate is. So we can find the wheel rate uh, by using the scale, by putting it under uh, under the tire, and then measuring the distance, we'll see. You know, we'll say like 100 pounds, and then we'll add another 100 pounds, and then it'll move. You know, half an inch. Uh, the tail section, or I mean, the wheel will move closer to the tail section by let's say one inch. So we'll know that the wheel rate is going to be 100 pounds. So, but. We're gonna do it differently. So this is gonna be a swing arm. It doesn't matter how really how long it is. Uh, this is gonna be a spring. And the wheel is gonna be right here. So let's mark it up. Wheel. The bam. This is this is a wheel. Put it back like so. So we got the spring rate. We're gonna use SR for spring rate. So spring rate for this spring is gonna be a hundred pounds per inch. And it's, we already know that uh, if we put a hundred pounds of force on the spring, that means it's gonna compress by one inch. And here we have the swing arm. First, let's talk about uh, basic uh, leverage. So, if we put 100 pounds of weight here, this part is going to be fixed, so you can move like that. If we put 100 pounds here, and the spring is halfway down the uh, swing arm, it's going to double the amount of weight due to leverage. So, you put 100 pounds here, it's going to apply 200 pounds of force on the spring due to leverage so if uh, it's applying 200 pounds of force that means the spring is going to compress two inches you know a hundred inch a hundred pounds for first inch and then a hundred pounds for the uh, next inch so when we apply a hundred pounds of force here it's going to apply 200 pounds of force on the spring that means the spring is going to move two inches that means the wheel is going to move four inches. So now, since we know the wheel moved four, four inches when we applied 100 pounds of force, we take that 100 pounds of force and we divide it by four to find out. Because wheel rate is measured in, just like spring rate, in pounds per inch or kilograms per millimeter. So we take 100, uh, we divide it by four, we come up with... 25 pounds per inch so so uh, what's the deal here? we got the uh, we got the 100 pound spring we got two to one you know we got the motion ratio of two but the wheel rate is four times less well yeah, I couldn't believe that myself at first. So it took me a while to figure out. But wheel rate equals to spring rate divided by motion ratio squared. So since this is 2, Two, uh, 2 times 2 or 2 uh, squared is 4. So that means that whatever the force you apply on the wheel, we have to square up the motion ratio. So on this bike, since it's 3.75, we're going to have to, uh, the force that's going to be applied on that spring is going to be 3.75 times 3.75. 
so it's going to be it's going to be pretty pretty large amount so the spring is going to have to be pretty heavy duty the spring rate is going to have to be really high so let's get back to our formulas now we know the wheel rate and we know the spring rate and uh, we know the uh, motion ratio so <clears throat> we can also find uh, the spring rate so spring rate equals to wheel rate times motion ratio squared so since we know all that uh, if you know the wheel rate and you know the motion ratio you can find out the spring rate if you know spring rate and you know the motion ratio you can find the wheel rate if uh, you don't know the motion ratio but you know the uh, wheel rate and spring rate we can find the uh, motion ratio uh, motion ratio so let's make an example uh, let's say wheel rate is we'll use the same thing wheel rate is 25 spring rate is 100 so let's say we don't know what the motion ratio is so let's figure it out so we got the spring rate equals uh, wheel rate times uh, motion ratio squared so we don't know the motion ratio so but we know the spring rate which is 100 and we know the wheel rate which is 25 we're going to pretend we don't know uh, motion ratio so it's going to be x squared so it's 100 equals 25 times x squared so first uh, we have to divide everything by 25 so we take 100 divided by 25 come up 4 equals uh, 25 divided by 25 equals 1 so we drop it off and then we have x squared then that's an easy problem x equals 2 well plus minus 2 because we just take the square out of it but it can be minus so <laughs> uh, our motion ratio can be negative so we'll just use 2 and that's this is how you can figure out uh, motion ratio spring ratio uh, spring rate uh, wheel rate if you don't know one out of the three so uh this is going to be it for now uh for this video it's pretty short uh, next video we're gonna actually use the formulas to calculate uh spring rate for my bike we're gonna use a scale and uh simple math and we'll figure out what spring rate is gonna suit the best for this bike so thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time